I don't know if this tour is even happening. Okay, let's just talk about this for a second. Yeah, these these days are just so goddamn weird. I remember this, the, like, because everything changes from day to day. I don't know if I'm going on tour. I don't know if I'm going out to perform. And then next day, something else happens. And I've uh, let me start by talking about, uh, yeah, the coronavirus. It's been a little insane. What, what amazes me is how people react to it. Like, did you see all those people panic buying? Just fucking, yeah! tearing stuff down and it's such a darwinistic thing because they shut down denmark and uh, the prime minister met a flex and she was on the news and she went now there's no need for panic buying we've checked the warehouse we, we work together with the military there's plenty don't panic buy toilet paper and don't 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 panic buy yeast or butter it's fine and people were just writing down toilet paper Yeast just running down. Ah, just, if that isn't, that's like the perfect Darwinism because all the idiots now, you've all got coronavirus. All the, they're like, she's like, stay inside, don't panic buy. And now every single idiot ran out and just, my toilet paper. And apparently the coronavirus, you know, it, 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 it upsets the stomach as well. Perfect. Now you can shit yourself to death in your Game of Thrones chair, king of toilet paper. What a bunch of goddamn idiots. I went uh, on uh, nemli.com, which is where you can have groceries delivery. It's like Amazon, um, but in Denmark. And I put that on and there were 179,000 people in the queue in front of me. And I was just, st people are panic buying online. Just caps lock, milk, toilet paper. The goddamn panic was insane. <laughs> people always talk about how people are idiots online and then you go online and it's perfect. I'm even growing my apocalypse beard and we're on just a few days in. I don't know how long it's gonna be until I can get out again, until I can get outside and do some stand up. And that's when I'll shave. But until then, let's just grow a goddamn apocalypse beard. <laughs> Why not? Who cares? It's just you and me, guys. It's just you and me. And it's so it's so weird because now like stand-up is my job. It's what I do. I go out to crowds of people and I perform for them. And now I can't get to perform for them. Since so so now I don't know what I'm like. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if I, like I know a bunch of uh, uh, television people and uh, like there are companies going bankrupt. Like a lot of my friends are panicking these days. I just, a lot of uh, television people, cause we've got these massive, imagine you've got a huge television production, a huge television production, like any show you see on TV. If one of those people, one of those actors, is infected with the coronavirus or even one of their friends that they've hung out with, they have to isolate for 14 days. You can't just rem like watch the Avengers and all of a sudden Tony Stark just isn't there for like half the shoots. They just have to like animate him in and just voice over his lines. It, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So I don't know what's gonna happen with my English speaking career now. And so I don't know if I can make any money, to be honest. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to travel and do stand up. So far, it doesn't look like it. I was, I'm supposed to go on this massive tour with uh, Russell Howard. It's like a dream for me. And all of a sudden, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going. I don't know what's happening, um, but I'm hoping to, to work more on the English speaking tour these days and just, you know, work on that at home. At least I can't go out and perform. I can't test it, which is so weird because that's the difference between musicians and stand up comedians is we always stand up comedians. We have to try it out. We can sit in the room and be like, I'm a genius. But then you go out and it's not funny and you're like, oh, OK, guess I'm not a genius. But if you're a musician, you can just sit at home and go, I'm a genius. 
Wheels on the bus go around, round, round. Hey, round, round, round. Ho, round, round, round. And you feel good about yourself. And if no one listens to it, you go, ah, well, it's just, you know, the, the, this goddamn system's all rigged. They don't know talent when they see it. But if you go on stage as a stand-up comedian and you're horrible, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there's no running away from the fact that people don't laugh. Yeah, so, uh, so no more. I don't know about the stand-up. The shows are getting cancelled. And you can't... I'm basically just, and I'm also only high-fiving these, like, with my elbow. This is the one time where it's actually lethal to go. You want to see me? I can, I can lick my elbow. It's, it just feels like the end of days, doesn't it? it feels, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, guys, about this? What, what, what could be the way to, to shut down Corona? If we all, like, we're, I know we're all doing our part, and it's good, because we have to think about each other and each other's health. And I'm I'm really concerned about it. Um, of course, Katrina's grandparents are old and sickly. My mother has a cold; her lungs are bad. So you know that might be a problem. I've got a multi-handicapped little brother. He's also got a very weak immune system. So I'm you know I'm very worried about infecting the people I love around me. So I don't know what's uh, exactly what we're gonna do. What are we gonna do? Wouldn't it be amazing if the cure for the coronavirus was slicing a quarter lime and shoving it down our throats? <laughs> yeah, as Virtua says, show love for people by not seeing people. It feels so weird though. It does feel very weird. Also, I'm a very touchy-feely kind of person in a non-Harvey Weinstein kind of way. I know that's, it might come off weird. I just love touching people against their will. No, I, I mean, I, I'm a very, I'm a hugger. I love hugging people when I'm hanging out with my friends. I always like, I'm a big, I like touching people and kind of going, ah, oh, my mate. And now I'm just, kipir, kipir, not touching anyone. It's very weird. So it's been, yeah, that's the Corona high five. Corona high five, pow, pow. Extrulis down says, my dad is right now in the hospital due to the coronavirus. Uh, so here in Hanning, we're just praying. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Your dad will be fine. Your dad will be fine. We've got still some very, very competent um, medical personnel in Denmark, and they're going to do the best. Thanks for coming in here and sharing. And re remember, you're not alone. That's why we're all in here, isolated, uh, not going out to do our job. And it, we're all taking uh, massive tolls uh, on our lives. It, it's affecting all of us. And that's why I, I'm sitting here talking about I've got all these dreams of doing English stand-up that I've been working on since uh, 20, well, 2016 is when I started really seriously planning going after the English career. And I've invested so much time and money and energy that I could have spent doing other things. And this year, it finally came to fruition because later this year, I was planning on doing two massive comedy festivals. That's been my dream and uh, touring in the UK and touring with Russell Howard that, that I was gonna yeah I should be in Germany right now actually touring with Russell Howard so this is my new tour look at that bald ugly fuck. and this is the tour these tour uh, gigs are up for now which is uh, Copenhagen Odense Aarhus Weile uh, Copenhagen again Espia and then Edinburgh is at an entire month. London is probably going to be shut down anyway. Sweden and Norway, I'm not going to be able to travel. I don't know if this tour is even happening. And no one is buying tickets these days. I just launched the tour. <laughs> and uh, then the corona hit. And luckily I'm not touring right now. I know my manager and my booker are just panicking. So for me, it feels like a lot of dreams are falling apart right now. But then again, let's just remember that, you know, dreams are not as important as your safety and your health. It's nice to have dreams and I can still dream about coming back. But what's more important is that we take care of each other and we feel good and uh, we do our best to help each other out as a society, as a, a world citizen. That's one positive thing that's coming out of this madness is we're all coming together and we're supporting each other and we're supporting uh, other countries and trying to, to, to manage this as well as we can. Um, so I think that's, 
you know, my my loss of not being able to do stand up for for a couple of weeks or a month or two months and considering what I can do with the tour and the comedy festivals, people are already talking about canceling them. They're going to get canceled probably. And all the money that I'm losing these days, I'm doing corporate gigs, which is a, a big way of making money as a Danish stand-up comedian. Since I don't do television, because all I focus on is doing stuff in English. So I don't do Danish television, I only do stuff in English. So that's why I'm here for you guys. I'm here with you doing stuff on Twitch, where I can get to practice my English stuff. I can still put stuff on YouTube that's in English. Um, but again, all of the, the, the Danish TV I could have done and all these different things would have made me money. So instead I do a bunch of corporate gigs uh, and a lot of stuff in English as well. I was, I was doing a show for uh, the Copenhagen University and I was gonna do some smarty pants material. And talk about how smart you all are. But all of these gigs are getting canceled as well. And now I'm sat here with a one man show tour a bunch of <laughs> and it's it's costing me and it's costed me some dreams some stuff that i have to reconsider and i just have to kind of take it as it comes and no one's buying t uh, tickets uh, the same way they used to these days and you know but it, it it's fine what's most important is i'm healthy my friends are healthy you guys are healthy we're still supporting each other and we're hanging out um, and and uh, trying to keep the positive vibe going and I think that's the most important thing more than me not being able to tell my penis jokes It's quite hard for me actually because I'm very proud of the penis jokes. I've written over the last four years You know, it's not really a problem then we've got someone in the chat with a dad who is actually in the hospital right now and you're praying for your father's uh, well-being due to this horrible horrible disease so again, you know, perspective, we really need to come come together. So I'm glad to hear that you all are. Thanks for the su support in here. It makes me happy that there's still people wanting to be entertained. And that's my job these days. I'm just gonna try to do a few jokes here. I'm gonna uh, make sure that we keep the, the vibe going and that we're upbeat and happy because there's no reason for intense panic. We just need to get through this and on the other side will come out and we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about ourselves and we're more prepared for the next time a crisis comes in and hopefully we'll feel more like world citizens. That is my speech to the family. That's my speech to the family.